So I want to ask our children, our first portion of our talk is for our children this morning, and I want to ask each one of you a question, and I want you to try to answer me honestly. How are you feeling today? You're feeling good? What about you? Great? Is there other words that you could use to describe good or great? Awesome, okay. Uh, and you're Noah, right? Noah, how are you feeling today? Pretty good. Julian, how are you feeling? He's just giving me a thumbs up. Now, if we were to get in deeper on this, uh, could I ask, are you happy? And Shiloh, are you happy this morning? Yeah, Noah, are you pretty happy this morning? And Julian? Okay, so for a second, I'm going to ask you guys can, can pull off your mask for a minute. And I want to ask for you guys to show me what happy looks like on your face. Oh, look at those beautiful smiles. So we know when we're talking about being happy, we would smile. So if you guys all said you're good, do you think you're, are you happy this morning? You're happy this morning? Are you happy this morning? Now, can you make your face look the opposite? What's the opposite of happy? Mad, maybe? Some other words. Somebody that's not happy might be sad. So can you make your face look sad? So you guys are able to do that, even though you said you were happy. This is a kind of amazing thing that we can do with our faces. All right, masks back on. We're going to pull out some more masks. We're wearing a lot of masks these days, right? Now, a lot of people will be walking around, and they just have masks just like this, right? You see a lot of people wearing masks like this. Now, can you tell if I'm happy or sad? How do you know? Oh, because of my eyes. You're really perceptive. I am pretty happy this morning. What about now? Oh, see, so you're very perceptive. Now, we, we have different masks. And have you noticed that not all people just wear these blue medical masks, right? You, you don't have a regular you know, medical mask on. I'll show you some other ones. This is one that I wear a lot. Kind of looks like I got a big smiley face here, right? And what would that say if I'm wearing this mask? Can't really tell as much what I'm, whether I'm happy or sad. Somebody might wear this mask and go, well, this is a county mask. It's trying to promote safety to everybody. It says combat COVID, right? So our mask even says something here. Let's try one more here. What about this? This is a fun one. You see what's on there? Little kittens. Why would somebody bother putting little kittens on their, on their mask? Because it's fun. Now, most of the time when we have facial expressions, right, we have expressions like we can be happy and we smile. When we're sad, we might frown. When we're angry, we might scowl. There's lots of different facial expressions that show what we feel on the inside. But just as all of you guys just did, you guys showed that you could be happy and pretend to be sad. Yep. In a way, it's kind of like putting a mask over our real expression. Even though I might be happy, I can pretend to be sad. Why would somebody pretend to be sad if they were happy inside? Hmm. It's a tough question. Have you ever wanted something, maybe it's a cookie or something like that, and your parents will go, no, you've already had enough. And you might go, well, I know how to get a cookie. And you might go, please. What do they say when you have big eyes? You go, please. What is that called? Puppy dog eyes, right? So we can put on an expression to get what we want, right? Like, oh, well, my mom can't resist the puppy dog eyes. Sometimes we might act sad, even though we might not be so sad, so we can get attention from other people, right? Now, is this a good thing, to make our faces show something that's kind of different than we are inside? Yeah? It's kind of a form of lying, in a way, isn't it? 
Now, what's hard about this is we're built to be this way. The Lord made us so that in a way we can think one thing on the inside and we can express something different on the outside. It's not necessarily a good thing, but what does the Lord look at? Do you think that if we're happy and we're pretending to be sad or if we're angry and we're pretending to be really nice, what does the Lord see? He would see the anger and not the, not the happiness, right? Because it's what's inside. The Lord knows everything, right? So we read this story not too long ago, but I want to read it again because it points at a really important thing about how the Lord sees us, that no matter how much we might show ourselves to be one way to other people, that the Lord actually sees our heart. So this is a story uh, with the kingdom of Israel, and we had King Saul was the first king of Israel, you remember? And then he got in trouble because he did bad things, and the Lord said he needed to go anoint another person. And so Samuel went to the house of Jesse, and Jesse was the father of who would become King David. So this is 1 Samuel chapter 16, beginning in verse 4. And it says, So Samuel did what the Lord said and went to Bethlehem, and the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, Do you come peacefully? And he said, I have come peacefully to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the service. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. So it was when they came that he looked at Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. So let's pause here. So Samuel was the prophet of the day, right? He was the most important person in Israel, and he did what the Lord commanded him to do. And he was the one that led everybody in worship. And in this case, he was anointing the new king over Israel. Well, Jesse, the father of David, had lots of children. And so Samuel came and he saw this group of children coming maybe from the oldest. Let's say, let's pretend Aliab was a really good looking, strong, really nice guy. And then each person down the line was really good looking and strong. And they looked like they were smart. And Samuel looks at Eliab and says, surely this must be the one that the Lord's going to anoint. Why did Samuel think that? Because of what? Because he thought that Eliab looked like he would be a good king just by the way he looked. Maybe Eliab was looking strong and important. And so Eliab, Samuel thought, Eliab must be the good king. And the Lord says something really important because it's not just what the Lord, what we look at on the outside. The Lord talks about something else. So Samuel says, surely the Lord's anointed is before him, thinking it was Eliab. In verse 7, it says, but the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as a person sees. For a person looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Right? A lot of the time, we look at other people and we see them just for the way that they look. If somebody looks sad, we think they're sad most of the time. If somebody looks happy, we think they're happy. But just as you guys showed, you can look sad when you're actually happy on the inside. You might be angry and want to get revenge on somebody on the inside, but pretend to be really good. But the Lord can see through all of these things. The Lord doesn't look at the appearance of a person or the way that we pretend to be, he looks at our heart. What does your heart look like? Hmm. A crystal? It's a hard thing to wonder. The Lord's not talking about, of course, our physical heart that goes bump, bump in our chests. The Lord's talking about our real feelings our real desires, all of the things that we really want inside and not the way that we look on the outside. 
Now, King David, later on, when he, King David wrote lots of poetry and lots of songs, and in one of his psalms, he talks about how sometimes people can do things that are against the Lord and think that the Lord doesn't even see them, that they can get away with bad things. Listen to what the Lord says in Psalm 44, verse 20 through 21. He says, if we had forgotten the name of our God or stretched out our hands to a foreign God, would not God search this out? For he knows the secrets of the heart. Hmm. So the Lord knows the secrets of our heart. So that no matter what facial expression we put on, no matter how we act on the outside, the Lord actually sees what's on the inside. And this is really important. It's really important for us to remember that the Lord sees what's inside, our motivations, why we want to do something. Do we do it because we love another person? Do we do it because we love the Lord? Or are we doing something because, ooh, if I put puppy dog eyes on, I'm going to get myself a cookie? Hmm. I don't think the Lord works that way. I think he'll see right through our puppy dog eyes and go, you just want a cookie. Is that cookie good for us or not? We don't know. We'll have to ask the Lord about that later. But the Lord wants us to be the same on the inside as we are on the outside. So we have to develop a really good, strong character inside. So that the Lord looks at us and sees, how are they trying to, to, to live? The Lord can actually encourage us and, and lift us up and make us better at, us, at it. And just like King David was anointed to be the king, King David was a very small young boy, but the Lord saw in him that he was going to be able to lead the kingdom of Israel. He called him a man after his own heart. Amen. The Lord give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways.